Hello everyone, welcome to a, a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of one blood and also talking about non one of one blood and sort of how it works. I've been in this game for like four months now and I learned a lot yesterday about one of one blood and I feel like it's something that's kind of like not talked about enough. So I wanted to put together a little presentation, a little PDF and uh, just run through what we mean by one of one blood and non one of one blood and how to make the most of it, right? So firstly, what is one of one blood? Well, one of one blood is based off five PFPs. Now you probably see them when you're looking. If you're new to the game, you'll spot them straight away when you go bloodline, you'll go, these look different to the other horses, you know? They look very different. They have very unique attributes that you don't really see on other horses, right? So. As you can see on their names, it's quite important that you, as you get more advanced in the game, you learn their names. So Astro is, uh, this, is the astronaut, which is Soulnaut Stables or Soulmate Stables. We have At The Track, Jockey. I don't know who owns that. We have Ticket, which is, I believe that's actually Rain, but we have, we have Ticket. We have Ziggy and we have Scuba. So they all have individual attributes. You can see they're all very different, but why is this relevant? Well, there's also five versions of the female, okay? And we'll get onto that shortly and what that means. But just going back to this slide here, just take a quick look at these. Maybe take a screenshot of it. And just remember that these are the five one-of-one one PFPs that you're going to see. Now, let's go on to the females, right? So we have on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, we have two different horses. One's called Churo, who is... Uh, from Soulnaut Stables, who's an absolute monster of a horse. Uh, this is one type of breed, okay? And if we go to the right-hand side of Rose of Zion, in the bottom right-hand side, you can see that there's a non-one PFP mixed with a female version of a one of PFP. Are these two any different in terms of their breeds? Are they both one of one breeds? Well, look, they don't count as one of ones, okay? So don't treat them as the same. We're going to explain what we mean here. So this one here is a one of one breed. You can see that the dad is a one of one and the mum should be a one of one, but she's not. She is not regarded as a one of one and it doesn't count as inbreeding. Now, if we go to this one, this is not a one of one because of the theory we talked about, because the females don't count as one of ones, as long as the dad isn't one of the five PFPs we showed earlier, then it's not a one of one breed. So Rose of Zion is this horse and this is not a one of one breed. And I didn't know this until yesterday and I was shocked when I found this out. So again, just touching on this, you know, these two may look different, but they actually are both non one of one breeds. So anytime you see a female version of the horse, which is always the bottom horse, if it's a what looks like a one of one PFP, it doesn't count as a one of one PFP. So very important we understand that, okay? <coughs> Pardon me. Now, why is this important? Well, we need to avoid inbreeding at every single opportunity. So if we don't know and you're new to the game and you're maybe you don't know everything about the game, Generation Zero tickets started everything. So anytime you see a horse that's currently age nine, if you look at a horse like Primetime or you look at a horse like Morning Wood, you know, all of these horses are age nine and their only parents are from PFPs. As you start to move down the chain, you'll see that non-PFP related horses are making other horses. And this is why it's really important to learn it soon because when the grandparents' grandparents, the great grandparents of these horses are non-one of one or one of one, you can get into really sticky situations, okay? So a lot of Generation Zero tickets have one of one blood. It made a lot of sense at the time to do one of one breeds. So you have to really look out for when you're doing your breeds. Do they have one of one blood? And does my horse have any of that one of one blood? It's okay if you have a Astro one of one blood, and then you also have a Scuba one of one blood and you can bind them. But obviously next time, you won't be able to do that for the next four generations, okay? So some archetypes such as RTF, which is right turf firm, and left dirt soft actually have less one of one blood in them. Now, the reason this is, is just how the PFP matches came together. You get one PFP, you match it with another PFP, and it makes a horse. 
That horse could either be any of the eight archetypes, and it just so happens that RTF and LDS actually have less one of one blood. Now, if we look at RDF, which is often considered the most competitive, it actually has four one of one PFPs, okay? And it, I've mentioned prime time here. And LDF also has three one of one and Rose of Zion. Now, why have I mentioned prime time and Rose of Zion? Well, they're both non one of one blood, okay? So if you, if you don't understand what that means by now, it means they don't have one of the five PFPs in their blood. Why is that relevant? Well, because they're non one of one and they're very desirable horses, they actually have a very similar amount of siblings than the one of ones do. So it's almost in a way you kind of want to consider them a one of one because they're so popular in the breeding market. Now, why is this important? Why is it important that some have more one of one, some don't have one of one? Well, the question is, is breeding's all about planning and options, right? So let's get into that. Breeding stays, or inbreeding, should I say, or the blood of a horse stays in the generation for four generations, okay? Stays in your family for four generations. So if we go back to this slide here, RDF has four one of one horses. So if you breed, let's say it's Astro, Scuba, Ticket, and, um, and Ziggy, okay? You could do a breed of Astro, season one. You could do Scuba, season two. You could do Ziggy, season three. And then you could do Ticket on season four. And what happens when you get to season five? Well, you can start back at the beginning, all right? Now, LDF, again, you can do very similar. You can do one of one, one of one, one of one, Rose of Zion, and then back to the beginning. But that's not the case for every single one, right? In RDF, we can constantly do that. We can constantly cycle between the four one of ones and that's, that's great. But that is why RDF is so bloody competitive, guys. It's because you can do that. Now, LDS only has two PFPs, right? So what do we do with the other two generations? What are we supposed to do? We've, we've bred with Astro, we've bred with Scuba, bang, what do we do? We've hit a wall. We either have to go down or we have to look at other options in the market, okay? So LDS has less one-on-one -on -one blood due to how the tickets worked. I wouldn't get into much detail on that. It's just how the algorithm worked or whatever it is. There is less, as a fact, LDS has less one-on-one -on -one blood than something like RDF. So we need to play around that. Now here's all the Gen Zero tickets and all of the archetypes, okay? So LTS, it generally lacks start, which is one of the six stats. LTF, there were zero generation tickets in LTF. So if you ever see an LTF horse on the market, that has been bred through uh, blood, sweat, and tears in a way. RTS, pretty well-rounded horses. RTF, only two one-of-one -one PFPs. LDS, again, same, only two one-of-one -one PFPs. LDF typically lacks stamina, but they're pretty well-rounded as, as an archetype. RDS has a small population, and RDF, a lot of one-of-one -one very competitive horses. And if you go to the breeding market, you'll see that 80% of the S pluses are RDF, right? So RDF is very competitive. Now let's look at the actual one of ones, which again, if you're, if you're watching this, you may want to screenshot all of these or put it into a Word document, however you want to do it, because it will be very handy for you going forward. LTF, no generation zero tickets. So there's no one of one blood involved. Well, there could be, but at, from the generation zero, right as it stands, right? None to worry about right now. LTS, uh, we have Ticket, Jockey, and also Scuba. RTF, we have Astro and Scuba. RTS, we have Jockey, Scuba, and Ticket. LDF, uh, Ziggy, Scuba, and Astro. And then LDS, we have Scuba and Ticket. And finally, RDF, you can see there's four there. Astro, Scuba, Ticket, and Ziggy. And RDS, uh, from my understanding, actually only has one, which is Scuba. Uh, RDS, I may need to have clarification on, but as far as I know, RDS is definitely the lowest. Now, there's some honorable mentions here, like I said at the beginning, right? Because of the fact that Primetime is, is such a popular stud, he has a lot of siblings, you know, same as Doc Holliday in RDS and Light Saturn and LDF, someone like Morning Wood and Shawnee Bear, Rose of Zion. You know, all of these horses have a lot of siblings, right? So you definitely want to plan around that when we're doing our breeding. Now, the plan of attack. 
I mentioned it earlier, but we want to be breeding around one of one as much as possible, right? It's great to have one of one in your blood, but at the same time, you don't want to limit yourself going forward. So when, when people think about breeding four seasons ahead, this was a concept that I spoke to big accounts about and they were like, you know, just need to plan ahead. And I didn't understand what they were talking about. I think I pretended to understand what they were talking about. And I thought I knew, but until I actually understood how they, how the one of one blood was broken down in each archetype, I didn't really know how to start it. So I'm going to give you a helping hand. Really, all they're talking about here, guys, is they're talking about the blood. They're not talking about the stud, right? So when, what, what we mean is if you go to the breeding market right now, you'll see a horse that's maybe age nine. Um, by the time you reach four seasons away, that horse is going to be age 13. And there's a likelihood there's going to be a better version of that horse around. A better version as in more solid blood or higher grade or whatever the case may be, right? So all they're talking about is if we go back to this slide here with, uh, with, the, with the four different horses, RDF, really simply put, the first season we do Astro, the second season we do Scuba, then we do Ticket, and then we do Ziggy. Now, this can get a lot more complicated than that. A, a lot of theories that I've started working out here in my head is that if you know someone else is doing a cycle, let's say they started with Scuba, you know, they started with Scuba here and then they went to Ticket, and you started with Astro, you might notice that the Astro baby that came out is insane, okay? And you want to breed of that, and that aligns to your cycle. But that person may not retire that horse. So then what did you do? Or likewise, the other way is you have actually started your cycle, your two horses into your cycle. And then you notice out of nowhere, there's an amazing foal came out. It's now retired and it's on the breeding market. And it doesn't align to your strategy because you've already bred of it two seasons ago. So you need to almost, the more advanced you get into this game, the more complicated you want to make it the more beneficial it does become to you because you can spot opportunities. Uh, but again, I'm, I've just learned this yesterday, guys. So I'm no expert. There may be some flaws in this video, but this is just trying to understand, trying to pass on the knowledge that I learned yesterday. Uh, so thank you, Monkey Tennis, for explaining this to me. Because I never quite got it. And I, I thought I got it. I didn't get it. Now I get it. I feel like it's opened up a whole different wormhole for this game, okay? So really want to emphasize plan around the blood and not the stud and that has a nice jingle to it actually so i got i might start using that going forward so plan around the blood not around the stud and um you know in void in breeding right this is goes without saying right but in v in breeding is going to be it's more common than you think and without breeding reports it can be quite hard but there are tools like mj informatics breeding barn that will tell you if it's invalid you can also just do some quick looking as well which but again Better to rely on third-party tools to do it for you, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, inbreeding will only get more common without this sort of knowledge, right? Without this core understanding, you're more likely to make mistakes, more and more likely to buy a horse that could have inbreeding, more likely to do a breed and not really see it out properly. So it's really important we understand the cycles involved in breeding. It's also really important we understand the blood in our archetypes so if i was starting out today i have horses across every single archetype and i've probably spread myself a bit too thin you're probably better off just starting off in something like you know ldf and just learning the horses in ldf learning who you want to be breeding with building out a plan for okay i might do in ldf i might go for, for rose of zion and then i might go for shawnee bear and then i might go for some one of one blood and if you don't understand what I'm talking about here, then, you know, you probably have a bit of way to go. And that's totally OK, because when people when I did the video with Mike on the 101, he was talking about horses and I didn't even know who they were. I was like, who? Who's that? Doc Holliday, who's that? And now I look back on it, I realize how significant Doc Holliday is as a horse. Indian Wells, you know, all of these horses, I didn't really understand the significance of it until I started understanding this. So really important, guys. Uh, I want to sort of end it there and say this is probably an ongoing thing. It's definitely not something you can just read up on once and be like, hey, I know exactly what I need to do. It's an ongoing thing you need to learn. But I feel like this presentation slash video should really help you understand exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about non one of one, one of one, the importance of blood and the importance of planning around breeding. So everyone, look, hope you enjoy, guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you on the next one.